sample problem 18.04 from chapter 18. So here we have two questions. The first question is, how much heat must be absorbed by ice of mass M equal to 720 gram at minus 10 degrees Celsius to take it to the liquid state at 15 degrees Celsius? So this question clearly tells about the phase change from the solid to liquid state. So ice is in the form of solid state. Once it starts melting, it will be changed to the liquid state. And here, they just give the information about the mass of the ice. The mass of the ice is 720 gram at minus 10 degrees Celsius. And when it was converted to the liquid state, by the time its temperature is 15 degrees Celsius. But the most important thing, we must know what is the intermediate temperature. So for that, we have to see this phase change diagram. So here, I'm going to draw the phase change diagram you have to see here. For example, initially, the ice is in negative temperature, right? So let's we take the negative temperature here is minus 10 degrees Celsius. And then it will reach when it start melting, the most important temperature, the intermediate temperature is zero degrees Celsius. In this temperature, it will start melting. And after that, when you increase the temperature, it will start converted to liquid state. Once the liquid reach the boiling point, it will convert it to the boiling state. That means the water is converted to uh, the steam state. So that means here, this temperature is 100 degree Celsius. So here, the most important state is the melting state. And here, this is the boiling. By that, it will become the vaporization part. But we don't have any information about the vaporization state. So we no need to consider about this phase. The only thing we have to consider from minus 10 degree to, let's we take 15 degree here. So that means the intermediate temperature between minus 10 and 15 is 0 degree Celsius. So we have to take this temperature for our consideration. So now we have three states from the solid to the liquid state. So what are they? The first one, I'm going to find the energy, heat energy. That means the warming of ice. So the first state is warming of the ice. So here we have to find what is the heat energy absorbed by the ice. So for that, we have to use the heat energy absorbed formula, which is Q, which is equal to MC delta T. So here I have tried M, which is nothing but the mass of the ice, multiplied by the specific heat capacity of the ice, multiplied by the change in temperature. What is the change in temperature? We have final temperature minus initial temperature. So what is the final temperature here? You have to see this graph, minus 10 degree, then it will go to the intermediate temperature as 0 degrees Celsius. Then we have to come for the final temperature as 15 degrees Celsius. So here, from negative to this positive 15, the intermediate, because we are just going to find what is the warming of the ice. So here, the final temperature is 0 degrees Celsius, and the initial temperature is minus 10 degrees Celsius. And we have to use the specific heat capacity of the ice, and for that, here I gave the chart. So better we have to see this chart here. I'm going to take what is the ice value. So the specific heat capacity of the ice is 2220. So this value I have to use for the specific heat capacity value of the ice. So I'm going to substitute this value here. Now I'm going to substitute the values in this formula. The mass of the ice is 720 grams, so in terms of kilogram, this is 0 0.720 multiplied by the specific heat capacity of the ice is 2220 joules per kilogram Kelvin multiplied with the final temperature. What is the final temperature here? So this is the final temperature. So 0 degree Celsius minus, minus of initial temperature is minus 10. 
I, I'm not converting the temperature from Celsius to Kelvin because even if you convert or not convert, it will give the same answer. Change in temperature in terms of Celsius is same as change in temperature in terms of Kelvin. So that's the reason I did not convert from Celsius to Kelvin. I'm just leaving the temperature in terms of Celsius. If you multiply everything, here you will get minus into minus become plus by that this value 0 0.720 multiply 2220 multiply 10. So here I got the heat energy absorbed value is 15984 joules in terms of kilojoules. I'm going to write Q1 which is equal to 15.98 multiply 10 power 3 joules so this is the answer for warming of ice in the second state we have to find the answer for melting of ice so the second step is melting of ice so i have to write the title as melting of ice for this i have to use the equation for the heat transformation heat so that means latent heat value we have to write. That means the heat of fusion. So whenever you are going to find the melting of ice, we have to deal with the equation of mass multiplied by the heat of fusion. The heat of fusion is the constant value for the water. So the latent fu the, the fusion value for the water is given in the chart here. So you have to see here the heat of fusion for the water is 333 kilojoules. Why we took water? Because ice melted to water. That's the reason we took the heat of fusion value, LF, for the water is 333 kilojoules. So I'm going to use this value here for getting the answer for melting of ice. So the mass of the ice is 0 0.720 multiply with 333 multiply 10 to the power of 3. Here I got the answer for Q2, the second state is 239.76 multiply 10 power 3 joules. This is our second answer. Now, the third is warming of liquid because we have three different temperatures starting from negative 10 degree to positive 15 degree. So, the intermediate temperature is zero. So, when you reach this 15 degree Celsius, the ice is start to warm as water because the ice will be completed, completely melted to water. And now the water is start to warming. So the third state is warming of liquid. Here the liquid is nothing but the water. So for this, I have to deal with the same formula for the heat absorption. So this time I have to use the mass of the, the mass of the ice multiplied by the specific heat capacity of the liquid multiply with the final temperature minus initial temperature. Now we have to go back to the chart, the graph. See here, here the 15 is our final temperature and 0 is the initial temperature. So 15 minus 0. Tf is 15 because we come for the liquid state. So in this state, it is liquid, right? So in this state, the ice is converted to liquid so we have to take the final temperature as 15 degrees celsius and the initial temperature is zero degrees celsius but this time we have to use the specific heat capacity of the water the specific heat capacity of the water if you see the chart it takes the value of 4187 so i have to use this value here but the mass i'm going to use the same value of the ice so mass is because the ice is a combination of water right so the mass of the ice I'm going to consider for the water itself. So 0 0.720 multiplied by the specific heat capacity of the water is 4187 multiplied with the T final is 15 degrees Celsius minus 0 degrees Celsius. Here I got the answer as 45219.6 is our third energy. So in terms of kilojoules. If you want to write 45.22 multiplied 10 power 3 joules. So now if you want to find the total energy for this conversion from 
the ice to liquid we have to add all these energies q1 plus q2 plus q3 so now i'm going to find the total energy for this conversion from the ice to liquid so the q of total which is equal to q1 plus q2 plus q3 so the q1 in the first part we got the answer as 15.98 kilojoules 15.98 kilojoules plus the second energy is 239.76 kilojoules 239.76 kilojoules plus the third energy is 45.22 kilojoules if you add all this you will get the the total energy the total heat energy required to convert from solid to liquid so here i got 300.96 multiply 10 power 3 joules so this is the answer for the first question we have one more question now i am going to solve that question the second question is if you supply the energy if you supply the ice with the total energy of only 210 kilojoules what are the final state and the temperature of the water so here if you supply the total energy of 210 kilojoules so the total energy the total energy supply to ice is 210 kilojoules which is 10 to the power of 3 joules what is the remaining energy so for finding the remaining energy because they clearly mentioned you are just giving the total energy 210 kilojoules to the ice so for that we have to subtract this value because the warming of ice so from 210 kilojoules we have to subtract this for getting the remaining energy so now what i'm going to do i'm going to subtract for getting the remaining energy so the remaining energy the remaining energy q of remaining which is equal to 210 multiply 10 power 3 minus the energy for the first part is 15 because it is in the i state that's the reason we subtract this value 15.98 subtract 15.98 multiply 10 to the power of plus 3 here i got the answer as 194.0 kilo joules so this is our remaining energy this is our remaining energy so in this condition we have to find what is the final state in which state the ice is there so we are going to find what is the final state as well as what is the temperature of the water in the initial state so for that we have to use the formula for the fusion of heat that means heat of fusion we have to use q which is equal to m multiplied by the fusion of heat here q is nothing but the remaining energy this time we are going to find what is the mass of the ice so we have to rearrange this equation the mass of the ice which is equal to because we are going to find what is the mass right now when you just give this 210 kilojoules so therefore m which is equal to q remaining that means the energy remaining divided by the heat of fusion so in this place i am going to substitute 194 multiply 10 power 3 over to the fusion value the heat of fusion value for the water is 333 i already showed the chart right so it's a constant value 10 to the power of 3 you can cancel this here i got the answer as 0 0.583 kilogram so this is the mass of the water 
So what is the remaining from the eyes? Initially, the mass of the eyes is 720 grams, right? So here, we already know the initial mass of the eyes. The initial mass of eyes is 0 0.720 kilogram. Now, when you give some energy, you will get this answer. So this is the mass of the water. So what is the remaining value? The remaining value, when you subtract this value from 0 0.720, you will get so 0 0.720 minus 0 0.583. We got the answer as 0 0.1. 137 kilogram of ice. So see here, the ice, once it starts melting, it will have the combination of the liquid as well as partially solid state. So all this will take in this region. We have to go back to the chart. You have to see here, all these conditions will take place in this region. In this point, it will be completely solid, no water, no liquid state. When it comes to the middle, half of the value is for ice mass, half of the value is for the water mass. But when it comes to this extreme end, it will start liquefied. That means zero percentage of the ice and complete percentage of the water. Because here liquid is nothing but water. So here, when you give this much of energy, this conversion will take place and it will all take place at the temperature of zero degrees Celsius. You have to see the chart. All this line is zero degrees. So this conversion, the partial conversion of liquid to solid or solid to liquid will take place at this temperature. So the temperature is zero degrees Celsius in this state. When you give this additional energy, the ice will have, or the ice mass is converted to partial amount of water, partial amount of ice. So here we got 0 0.583 kilogram of water and 0 0.137 kilogram of ice at zero degrees Celsius. So this is the answer for this question. That's it. Thank you.